We're going to begin by integrating a scalar function over a curve. So the main actors here is one scalar or real valued function fxy or later f of xyz. And then we have a curve in R2 or in R3. Here in the picture I summarize what we're talking about. The quantity of interest that we need to define and study is the following. And I write it as a definition. So we are defining, we are creating this new object. It's like, um, please meet this new creature. Integral of this scalar valued function over the curve. And we put the, this ds for fun and also for some applications later. Is defined to be so this is not equality, it's a definition. Sometimes they put these colons here also to emphasize that, that fact. This shall mean, this expression shall mean none other than, it will be a real number, but that real number comes from integrating from A to B, the domain of the curve, which is going this way, or T. You look at the value of the function at RT. Is this a vector or a number? This is a number. F is a scalar value. So you are at time t, you are here at RT. You plug that vector into F. You produce a number. You want to multiply that by this number, R prime of t. Take absolute value and then dt. So that's it. There is no other meaning behind that symbol on the left than this thing. Uh, the reason we need this r prime of t, among other reasons, is that uh, this makes it independent of parameterization. So a very important fact is that this is quite intrinsic object. It really depends on the curve and not how you really travel along it. So very important fact partially due to this inclusion of r prime of t dt is that um, integral over the curve f d s is independent of parameterization of curve parameterization of the curve c and we saw before that there is one particular parameterization that is really important. It's difficult to find in practice, but in theory, it makes life so much easier. If rs is always from zero to the length of the curve, say length, is the arc length. It's one and unique. It's the arc length parameterization of c then uh, integral over c of f ds becomes integral from 0 to l f evaluated at the point r s r prime of s ds but the thing about arc length parameterization is that r prime s norm is just one so that becomes only ds. And now compare these two formulas. I hope I could zoom back to for you to compare. It's that um, this part is very analogous. So we get this and this. Therefore, it has been uh, useful to write ds, although this is really just um, formalism it's uh, it's not a mathematical equality so r prime of t d t but it ends up being useful in uh, formal calculations so ds that's why we introduced ds ds is the arc length parameter so the arc length parameter in theory it's often useful to describe things in terms of this arc length parameter. We have talked before about this so much. When we were talking about curvature, we saw that if you are parameterized by arc length, often your formulas for curvature and torsion get much simpler. The problem with arc length parameterization is it is difficult to find in practice and it gets very nasty. 
calculation wise but that's the story of how you integrate the scalar function over a over a curve there are certain properties of uh, this integral it's something that you would say obviously too but mathematically one should still make these precise so if you go along a curve c1 and then continue with a different curve c2 and uh, now you can concatenate them you can just join them together to look at the curve coming from their union so c1 union c2 and if you have a scalar function you integrate over this uh, it's true that you can integrate individually on the first one sorry this is ds and then separately on the other one and only then add so it's yeah of course but sometimes you know in mathematics things are not that easy for example cross product was not working backwards so another thing is that if you parameterize a curve backwards let's write this negative c to mean that we uh, this if this is c parameterized this way negative c is starting backward going that way if you integrate this scalar function over this it doesn't matter so it's uh, the same under reversing the order the reason I mentioned this is because soon we will introduce some integral where this will not be the case another thing is if you integrate addition of two functions over a curve you can integrate one function at a time so these are just saying that the intuitive facts about integrals that were true before are still true. Okay, let's talk about one application and maybe the only one in the book mentioned of this integration. And uh, yeah. So previously we've talked about center of mass. We had a plate, a metal plate, and we did some certain integration to find the mass. But this time we're looking not at a plate, but at a wire. Suppose we have this um, wire sitting in the plane made out of some material and given a point xy we have the mass density rho xy so mass density and curve is the wire given by some parameterization rt now the question is uh, where is the center of mass of this object uh, and uh, what is the total mass of this object so the total mass in this case will be given by integrating this mass density along the curve ds so you look at small segments of this and the mass is uh, something per unit here and uh, so this mass is a uh, say kilograms per uh, unit of length feet so it's not per unit of area that would be zero there is no area so here there's some confusion so rho is not really rho of x y it's rho of just one point it it only is non-zero along the curve okay you don't have to worry about these physics technicalities all you need to know is that mass is integrating the density along the curve which is consistent with previously that the mass was integrate the density along the whole plate okay and then the center with respect to x will be average the x values right you average x values along the curve of course averaging is against the mass and this will be ds and y bar will be averaging the y against the density along the curve so that will be the application the calculations are often simple so i'm not gonna um, write specific examples about this uh, 
actually I have one sorry so <laughs> I want to this is not really an example to illustrate the center of mass part but um, but also illustrate how these line integrals are calculated so let wire be on x squared plus y squared equal 1 and y positive so the wire is occupying or is in the shape of a semicircle of radius 1 okay this is your wire this is the curve C let me use some blue here and the mass density is some number k 1 minus y okay x bar because this is symmetric with respect to x x bar should be clearly 0 so find y bar so how do we do this formulas are visible in the screen so mass will be integrate density over the whole curve so the curve one parameterization we can write for the curve is and because orientation doesn't matter we go counterclockwise so cosine t sine t where t goes from 0 to pi half circle so 0 to pi and then we have k times 1 minus the y quantity right and then you have length of r prime of t so r prime of t is negative sine t cosine t and its length is equal to 1 this is actually arc length parameterization that is why this is the go-to parameterization for circles so that will be 1 dt and from this you will get some number that depends on k I think for uh, so pi times k okay k times pi will be that minus this will be cosine so minus 2 I believe right yep sine of t cosine and it, it's symmetric not anti-symmetric no cancellation so it's 2 that will be the mass and now let's look at the y bar and you don't need to memorize formulas to get the y average you want to integrate y along the curve against the density so this will be um, that number minus 2 from the only okay also here yeah one thing that puzzled me was that for k small this was getting negative we never have negative mass so that solves that issue okay and then you have y which is sine of t when you plug in that quantity and uh, that k you put out up front k times 1 minus sine of t dt it will be non-zero which is good news so you will calculate this to the end okay so that's the definition of line integral of a scalar function and uh, its application let's look at some particular formulations that this line integral can take without us noticing it uh, let's say in other notation so here nothing new is happening there is no new mathematics here happening suppose that the vector field sorry not the vector field um, I mean RT is often written as x y y t so if you have a curve in 2d then it's x and y coordinates are given by functions of functions x t and y t then 
integral over curve of some f of x y let me actually avoid this before parameterization i just don't write any input for f so f ds by definition will be a to b f evaluated at rt that means f evaluated at f of x t and at x t y t and now r prime of t is x prime t y prime of t and its length is x prime t to the power 2 plus y prime of t to the power 2 dt so this is not new formula it's just new notation previously instead of all of this we had our prime of t norm and that's just that okay um, but there is another benefit to this notation it helps us define some new integrals so define integral of so let's write this so defining definition how do we define given scalar f the integral with respect to x so with respect to x okay what do we mean we're trying to define this concept the integral with respect to x of f along a curve c given by rt t between a and b is first of all the notation is integral over c of the function f not against the whole curve i mean the arc length but against dx so that's a new object i am about to define and for this we say it's from a to b f evaluated at r of t that's one number and here instead of multiplying into into ds which would be um, this whole thing I multiply into dx and dx is uh, look dx over dt is x prime of t so this would be x prime of t and dt so all of this is dx so this is dx replacing that and f here replaces that so formally everything matches um, except that <laughs> this definition in this definition I don't have an x so it's given by a formula xt yt if your curve is given this way this is what we mean by integrating against x similarly integrating f against dy would be integrate from a to b f of rt times y prime of t dt okay so uh, we have now defined three objects integration of f against ds along the curve integration against y integration against um, x part of the reason this is defined Um, will be explained when we talk about integrating uh, vector fields along curves but that one I want to do a separate video on so in next video we will see why we want to have these notations and why they are useful as well as just FDS which was useful already